Hi there, Tim with Madrona Labs, back with another video on Kaivo. Today we are going to be going over the envelopes one and two. These are the final modulation sources in the top row that we will be covering, and then we'll be on to the granulator. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> So as you can see, Kaivo has two different envelopes and they were designed to complement each other. They have some similarities and some differences. First, let's talk about the similarities. They both have just one output, one trigger input. They both have an X velocity button, which we will talk about in a moment. And then of course, the graph that shows you the shape of the envelope and control over the different parameters of the envelopes. <laughs> So starting with envelope one, it is a classic ADSR envelope. ADSR stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. And as I mentioned, you have independent controls of each of these phases, the attack, decay, sustain, and release. And then there's also a level control. <laughs> Now envelope two is a little less common of a type of envelope. We call this a DAR, which stands for delay, attack, and release. So one of the key differences between envelopes one and two is envelope two has this repeat function, which means that you can turn it into an LFO with varying shape over time. So much like envelope one, envelope two's different phases of its wave shape can be modulated independently, and you can also modulate the repeat parameter. <laughs> As I mentioned, there are some common controls and parameters, so let's talk about those in more detail really quick. Each has their own trigger input, which react well to the gate outputs of the key or sequencer module. And as you can see, if I get a sequence going in the sequencer here, we are uh, now getting both of these opening in response to the gate output. Both envelopes one and two each have this X velocity button. And what this does is it multiplies the outputs of the envelope by the input velocity from the MIDI signal. So notice right here, I've got X velocity turned off. I've got a MIDI controller off screen here, and I'm just gonna play a little line. And now with this enabled, you'll notice I have more dynamic control when I play my MIDI controller here. And envelope two also has an X velocity button. I'm gonna leave that off for now and just show you really quick. When I hit a note on my MIDI controller, I've got the X velocity on on envelope one, and I've got the starting time of envelope two delayed a little bit, and we'll get into that in a second. So with X velocity enabled on envelope one, but not on envelope two, you'll notice that the signal coming from envelope one will be rather weak, but the envelope two signal will be the same no matter what velocity I hit the key at. And now with X velocity enabled on both, you'll notice if I hit nice and lightly on the MIDI controller. That envelope two follows suit, hit with more velocity, then we get more velocity coming out. One last thing to note on the X velocity buttons, if say I have my sequencer going and I'm triggering both of the envelopes with that, if I turn on the X velocity button on either envelope, it will no longer respond to the gate output of the sequencer, but only to the gate output of the MIDI controller from the key module. Another common feature between envelope one and two is their individual graphs that show you their shape. So as I change the attack time on envelope one, you can see the shape of the envelope changing and the decay time, the release time, and the same goes for envelope two. But other than just showing you the envelope shape, they're actually scaled to match the duration of the envelope sequence from start to finish. And these time settings are calibrated to correspond with the time at which it takes the output value to travel approximately 60% of its way to its destination. 
Now that we've talked about the common features between envelopes one and two, let's move on to all of the unique functions that envelope two has. So the first unique feature on envelope two that I wanna talk about is the hold button. So let's get our sequencer going again. Now we're just using envelope two to open up the gate down here. Now notice how the shape of the envelope changes pretty drastically when I hit the hold button. So the hold function on envelope two is essentially the same thing as the sustain parameter on envelope one, but rather than being able to go from zero and work your way up uh, all the way to one and everything in between on the sustain function on envelope one, the hold function is just a binary on or off. The next function that the envelope two has that I think is really unique is its repeat function, which essentially, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, turns it into an LFO. So as you can see here, we have nothing going into the trigger. And if I bring it up to repeat, now it's repeating every 0.7 seconds. So now if I bring it up to 0.5, that means it is repeating every 0.5 seconds, and then it will go all the way up to 220. So that's repeating 220 times a second. And of course you can change your attack and release parameters while uh, it's in repeat mode. So let's just really quick take an LFO here and modulate the attack and release times here. Now we have a really, really interesting uh, LFO shape here. Now notice as I turn the repeat dial up, you'll see this black bracket at the bottom of the graph. This basically shows the part of the envelope that is being repeated. So as I turn that up, we're obviously getting less of that envelope because it's re-triggering so quickly. Then one last thing to note about the repeating function here is if you enable the hold button, it actually disables the repeat function because the hold is, like I said, equivalent to the sustain of envelope one, but it's binary. It's either zero or it's one, on or off. Now you will notice to the right of the X velocity button on envelope two, there is the X envelope one. What this does is it actually multiplies the output of envelope two by whatever the value of envelope one is at the time of envelope two's being triggered. So let's get our sequencer going here. So with our level output on envelope one all the way up, we're getting the full level of um, both of the envelopes, so you're not going to hear much of a difference. Now, when I turn this level down, you'll notice that this triggering of envelope 2 is much stronger than that of envelope 1. However, if I click X envelope 1, now those are going to be equal, and as I turn that level up, the output of envelope 2 is going to match that of 1. So as I mentioned, envelope two is what we're calling a DAR envelope. DAR, again, standing for delay, attack, and release. So what the delay dial does is it lets you set a pause between the incoming trigger and then the start of the attack phase of the envelope. So starting down here at zero, let's turn on our sequencer again. And now both envelopes are triggering at the same time as I add a little delay to that. And this opens up all sorts of opportunities for some really interesting modulation, especially if you are modulating the attack, decay, and release of envelope one, and then the delay, attack, and release of envelope two. And then here, when we have the delay and the repeat parameters both working together, you can get some even more interesting modulation signals. So let's modulate some of our envelope parameters with our LFO here. So 
So up until this point, we've kind of been looking at the envelopes in a more traditional way as far as synthesis goes, you know, pressing the key on your controller, opening up your gate or your VCA. But now, and I know it looks very confusing because I've got all sorts of cables in the patch bay, um, I want to show you how you can utilize these two envelopes together to have a whole lot of crazy modulation. So here in this patch, I'm not only using the envelopes to open our gate, but I'm also using them to modulate the XY position in our granulator and the overlap of the grains within the granulator. So let's hit go on our sequencer and check out how this will evolve over time. All right, this has been our introduction to the envelopes one and two in Kaivo. If you have any questions about Kaivo or any of the other great synths from Madrona Labs, please visit the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.